as ever, three mains per side before switching. We only go two ahead on the mains on each side. So we just want to make sure that we look after the frame as much as we look after the strings. In here. Um, as you can see with the new Biado L, it's really good. It lets you get a really nice and close up to the frame because you've got very thin clamps on here. And the new five tooth clamps too. And just remembering on the throat, just to make sure that you go underneath the throat instead of over the top, because you don't want to damage the frame potentially or um, damage the string by putting too much low pressure on it. It's not great for the machine either because it pulls the machine down. So I'm not actually going to tension this fourth main here. I'm just going to thread it through just for ease of use. Later on, just being careful with the string there. Uh, one thing to note, just be really, really gentle when you're taking off the starting clamp, just to make sure that you don't scratch the string, because there is a kind of rough edge on the inside, which is what gives it the grip for bum and busting on that. With the RPM blast with the poly string, it's not, it's not mega hard, it's, it's actually, in my opinion, it's a fairly soft poly. Uh, it's obviously shaped as well, but only very slightly shaped. So it's quite a nice string to string with. It's not like the kind of Dunlop Black Widows or some of the other polys, which are really sharp around the edges, really angular, um, and can, can be a pain when you're doing the crosses. This is actually a pretty, pretty nice string to string with. Um, a little bit more difficult being the 1.3, being the thicker version. Personally, I, I love using the 1.2 or the 1.25 version of the RPM Blast, but it's a decent string and the player gets on well with the 1.3 now. No use to it in this particular player. Probably gets through, probably say like four or five rackets every couple of weeks from him. So no, he's a decent, decent player. So this racket's being strung at 54 pounds. So personally, um, I think a lot of players, I'd probably advise to be looking at sort of mid 40s to maybe early 50s maximum for poly strings, especially the RPM Blast. However, there are some players who definitely prefer to use slightly um, higher tensions for control reasons um, and sometimes for durability so that they're not slipping so much. So again, I'm not going to tension the string because I've gone through ahead now on the side, but I'll leave it there for ease of use for later on. Just stop that wobbling a little bit. Then yeah, this, this player is sort of 17, 18 years of age, so physically he's developed um, enough to be able to handle slightly higher tensions now. Uh, when you talk about junior tennis players so you don't really want to be stringing um, too high tensions or too hard of strings really with them so you know 13 and under really I'd be reluctant to use poly strings especially if they're not physically developed um, I'd much rather use a decent multi-filament um, synthetic gut or maybe kind of hybrid just to break them into the slightly harder string mode because you know the for parents, sometimes when you get a, a kid who's at a decent level, but they're breaking strings very, very, um, very frequently, it's you know it gets it gets expensive. So you know, you can see why some of the parents want to get their kids, and some of the coaches get their kids onto the harder strings quicker to save save a bit of money. But you know, maybe it's the detriment in the arm. But there are some you know really nice softer polys out there like Hyper G Soft, for example, which. Yeah, and it's going to be a, a decent string to, to have a kind of introduction to. Right, just going to stick the pre knot function on there, just to add an extra 10% onto the mains, because what we don't want to be doing is having 
any sort of tension slip on the side mains here. I want to have it nice and consistent. So we always add an extra 10%. Some people have a little bit more just onto the sides um, just to make up for any tension loss you get in that little gap there and around here. I'm going to be using a parallel knot on this, which is pretty of industry standard now for the Pro-Rex. So I'll babble that clamp here just to add a bit more weight into it one time off, making sure I keep hold of the string as I'm releasing the clamp uh, base first. Also just going to use uh, pliers here just to just to neaten off the edge of it there, just so we don't get caught, get his fingers caught in scratching. All right, just going to pre-knot that one actually. There we go, just keep consistency. Obviously with this machine, um, you only have to press the pre-knot button, pre-knot button once rather, um, and as soon as you pull the string, on the last main it'll just reset back to the original tension that you've set it at so there's no need to worry about being forgetful like i am it'll do it for you but again release clamp base first Off. So I'm actually going to be stringing three of these rackets today. Uh, right, so as you can see, the side mains pretty much bang on with that. Now, I'll start with crosses. So I'm just going to get the crosses. I usually use roughly about this particular racket here. Um, I usually use about just under three and a half of my arm width, arm, arm span rather, for the mains and a similar amount for the crosses because it's fairly fairly tight string bed. So we're just going to do these cross strings now. Um, what I'm going to do first of all is just feed all the strings through here. So we're just going through the first one. We're not going to start off using a starting knot. Um, we're going to use a starting clamp at the top first of all. Just make sure we've got enough room to do that, that's fine. Uh, the reason we're doing this is just, I think it's a bit kinder to the string, it's a bit kinder to the uh, racket as well, because you don't put all the tension through here until you've done a few of the crosses um, a little bit later on. So I just find it a slightly better way of doing it really. And also the knot finish is generally a little bit better and it minimises the risk of the starting knot um, or what would be a starting knot actually slipping in the first place. As you can probably see, I'm I'll explain why there's three strings going to be going through here in a minute, but rest assured I'll only be actually tensioning one string at a time properly. But I'll talk you through what I'm going to be doing. It's just a bit of a time saving exercise to start with. Um, so, first of all, I'm going to use a trusty Parnell pad here um, just to help protect the string. And the frame a little bit there, so we have it on there, uh, ready to pull first thing. So I always hold it in place a little bit just to minimise it slipping off and damaging the string a little bit. So one thing you might notice is that I've pulled tension on both of these strings at the same time. Don't worry, 54 pounds, which is what I'm stringing the racket at, goes through this one. This will obviously be less. However, I'm going to retension this um, using the knot function uh, at a slightly higher tension later on before I actually tie off anyway. So this one here will be retensioned. So don't worry, I'm not double. Uh, I'm not pulling through tension on two strings at a time. That would never happen. Um, one thing which I will be doing on this racket though is I will be using the one ahead method on the crosses, which um, is a time saver, but it's also a lot kinder to the strings, far less friction going through. Because if I'm doing it this way, 
there's not quite so much um, tension pulled on this string uh, because it hasn't been tensioned yet, obviously, uh, which means that it's easier to thread this through, which means that there's uh, less resistance, which means there's less damage made to the string through um, friction in the first place. Okay, I'm just being mindful of the strings, trying to try to pull the strings up and down a little bit just to make sure that you're not burning um, patches and notches in, in the string here. So again, that's something which you don't really want to be doing too much of because it's not good for the dur uh, durability of the string. Right, uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to get this one tied off. So put the knot function on there, so I get a little bit extra. So you can see there's about that much worth of space now in between the frame and the string. So it shows how much more tension needs to be pulled. I think we can get a little bit closer than that. So I'll do. So what I'm doing is I'm just giving myself a little space, bit of space here just so I can tie this off. Now I've put an extra 10% tension on this last string to make up for any kind of uh, space there might be between the clamp and the, fr and the frame on there. And using the Parnell knot again, which is you know, the kind of industry standard, standard for professional strings these days. Probably the most requested string, uh, sorry, not rather, at pro tournaments as well. Just keeps things nicely in place. Good finish. All the knots point up. Uh, it's just a neater, smarter job. Uh, and again, I'm crimping off the end of the string there just to make it a bit smoother. So it's not quite as painful for if you catch your, your hand or anything on there at all. Bringing this clamp back into play now. You see, I'm holding onto the string in the other hand. The reason why I'm doing that uh, when I'm pulling that one through is just to save me a bit of time without having to find the end again. But once I've strung one ahead, I'll just leave it in there so I can then tension this one. So I know where it is. Nice and easy. There's an argument to say that you could actually pull the majority of this one through at the same time, but it doesn't make a whole lot of difference. Um, so really just getting the string a bit caught up there. Like starting clamps and things. Um, been out for a long walk with the family today, so my hands are freezing cold at the moment. They're just starting to warm up. I've got the heater on, so it's starting to warm up a little bit, but I won't be doing any fancy finger weaving today it'll just be pretty much standard poly string slip and slide through the names which is a pretty good method it gets it done fairly quickly and also i find that it looks after the string pretty well because one thing which you do get when you um string especially with polys is quite a sharp edge there so you sharpen it deliberately so it goes through the grommets well um but if you're kind of doing standard kind of finger weave sort of uh, to there. What can happen, you can just catch the string a little bit. So if you just uh, kind of slip and slide through there. You're always having the smooth part of the string actually coming through in the first place. It's just, oops, lazy. I feel, feel the end of my fingers. Today. Um, what I tend to do as well is I know some people talk about getting right up and actually touching the frame of the racket with the clamps. Um, I get pretty close. I don't actually like getting the clamps right up against the frame just um, because I don't like putting extra pressure on the strings too close to that frame uh, because that little area there will be pulled through at some point. So I like to give a little bit of space just to make sure that any string that is clamped off doesn't then end up being in a 
position where it could have extra pressure on it if you frame the ball, for example. Now, I'm not going to video the whole of me stringing all across the scene, it's just a few of the top ones. I'll come back when I'm a little bit closer towards the end on the bottom. So we're just coming towards the end of the racket now, end of the cross strings. Um, get a lot more traffic when you start getting towards here with the posts and clamps and everything. Um, and also the string bed is now pretty tight. So it makes it a little bit more difficult to actually get the strings through in the first place. So hard to pull them through because there's a lot there's less give in the mains. Um, so it does slow you down a little bit. Um, so it means that you have to be a little bit more robotic with how you string it. You can't just slide the strings through quite as easily uh, when you get towards the end. So you can see it's visibly more difficult to actually pull those strings through there. But, you know, we'll persevere. I've only got a couple of the crosses left so far. But yeah, it's pretty tight. I mean, I'm stringing this at 54 pounds with polys on a close string bed too. So you will find that it does make it even more difficult than if you're just stringing it at a slightly lower tension. And these are obviously 1.3 strings rather than the thinner ones. So um, you know, we, we, we're dealing with, dealing with quite a lot here. But most important thing, be patient with the strings and look after them as much as you possibly can. Um, really important that you look after the strings, especially when you get to, down towards the end of the racket. So I'm just attaching that one off now, actually. Just because there's not a huge amount of string left over. And on this last one, I'm just going to turn the racket towards me. And I'm going to need to be a bit more kind of manual on this one. So keep my finger underneath. And what I don't want to do is get it all kind of knotted and tied up, which it can do. So again, really important thing here is to just pull it through on every few because you also don't want that twist. So some stringers might experience a kind of twisting look at the, at the end. So instead of getting lots of sort of side knots and things, pull it all out, don't crimp, don't twist that string. Actually, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna stick some extra tension on that with the knot function. Got my stuff in close to the frame. The good thing about the Pure Strike 100s, you don't have too much distance between the last cross and the tie off. Uh, and equally with the mains and tough. It's actually a pretty friendly racket. You don't have to make any adjustments to grommets um, outside of this. Um, so it's a pretty good design feature because not too many, not too many rackets actually, I think have the stringer in mind always when they're being being made, but Babalat have done a really good job of this one. So, okay, close the loop. What I've tried to do is I've tried to keep the um, cross strings relatively straight whilst I've been stringing, whilst I've been going down. But you'll, you know, ordinarily, especially with the 1.3 polys uh, on a string bed like this, you'll normally get a kind of smiley face syndrome where it goes up and down a little bit. Um, so for that, I'll just use my, um, all my setting off all just to get everything in place. Um, again, Babalat, I think the majority of my tools that I use are, are Babalat, really good quality. Um, and this is nice and smooth on the end, so it's not going to damage the strings whatsoever. But when you strung at a high tension with a thick string and it's a poly on a tight string bed, important to get this done quickly because what you don't want to happen is for the strings to notch and then permanently make marks in the string so that 
they're out of place. So get the string straightened as soon as you string the racket so they don't set. Because one of the things that players complain about is strings that move about a little bit. Now you don't tend to get that when they come from the factory because the strings have been sat in the rackets notching into place for sometimes weeks, sometimes months, sometimes even years. But freshly strung when they're going to be used the next day, get them straight straight away and you won't have any problems. So that is pretty much about it. I'm just taking care to release the racket properly. And we've actually got three of these, which I've just done. So hopefully you can hear the ping is pretty similar. Now I'd expect on these rackets, the ping to go down a little bit, but now it's pretty consistent. Normally you'll find the first racket you strung, the ping on it is normally a little bit lower than the one you've re most recently strung, just because they gradually creep a little bit of tension loss into it. But to be fair, I've, I've strung those three rackets within the last hour, hour and a little bit. Um, and, you know, they, uh, they they keep their tension. Important thing with stringing is consistency. Uh, so making sure that you get everything done uh, correctly, get it done exactly the same way, um, using exactly the same methods. Um, and try and do, if you've got batches of rackets in threes, fours, fives, do them all at once rather than waiting for later on in the day. Um, it's probably one of the best tips that I've ever been given by anybody. Um, don't do it in stages, do them all in one because you know the tension is going to be the same on all of them. It's all going to drop off at exactly the same and, you know, temperature conditions, moisture in the air, whatever conditions you're stringing in, uh, it means that everything's going to be uh, the same. So consistency is a really cool thing. Anyway, I hope you love that.